Welcome back to The Secrets of Writing a Research Paper. I am Mr. Ewing, and in this lesson, I'll introduce you to my dog, Rowdy. He's inspired part of this lesson. Now, let's get back to sharing some secrets about writing a great research paper. I'm going to guide you through the process in this lesson of how to identify reliable sources. Now, my dog Rowdy is a Vishla, so he's inspired this lesson with the article that we'll use to go through the characteristics of a reliable source. Now, a reliable source has five characteristics. An author with credentials, a source citations, peer approval, no bias, and up-to-date info. Now, as we continue through the video, feel free to pause, rewind, or even re-watch the video at any time. You can go at your own pace. Now, let's look closely at each of those characteristics, starting with an author with credentials. For this characteristic, we're asking, what is the author's job? How educated is the author? What subjects has the author studied? And what awards or recognition has the author received? If we were to put all of these questions into one, it would be, how much of an expert is the author on the topic he or she is writing about? Now, in this article, we have an author, Kim D.R. Durth. Now, I looked through the whole article and I couldn't find anywhere where it told us anything about who this person is. You likely will encounter a similar situation at some point in your research. So what you can do is do a quick Google search for this person. And I found out when I did that, that this person is a, a well-respected author and teacher of everything related to dogs. Um, so she is a well-known expert on the subject that I'm researching. So we can check off the box for having an author with reliable, trustworthy credentials. Now, characteristic number two is source citations. Where did the author get this information? Is the information actually in the sources cited? Is the cited source reliable? Can the fact be verified from another reliable source? So if we were to take all of these questions and put them into one again, the question would be, how reliable is the information presented in the article? Now, in your research, there will be a number of different ways that you can find source citations. Sometimes, an author will list their sources right at the end of an article. Sometimes, as in this case here, the author will put them in a little box somewhere in the article. And at other times, especially if you're reading a newspaper article, the citations may be in the text. So in other words, the author will write something like, research conducted by this organization has proven um, and so right in that sentence where they share the information they've also given you the source the information is from next we'll talk about peer approval questions we ask are how stringent an editorial or review process did this article go through was it printed in a respected journal, newspaper, or magazine? And is it included in a database? In other words, in one question, do other experts approve of what is written in this article? Now, here's a pro tip. All sources that you find on a database provided by your school are peer-reviewed, so they've received peer approval. That's why 
I suggest that students use only sources found at the library or found in the school's databases. Now you could use other sources, but you're going to have to do a good job of checking on whether peers have approved of this work. So here is the article on the database. And because it's on the database, I know right away that it has been peer reviewed and that makes my job really easy. It's also published in Dog World, which is a, a very well respected publication, a trustworthy publication about the topic of dogs and dog training. So I would say that this source has definitely met the characteristic of having peer approval. The fourth characteristic we'll talk about is no bias. Now, bias means having prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group. So we have to ask, does a company or organization that will benefit sponsor this article? Or does a person want to sway us to believe one side over another? Right. In this particular article, uh, I've read through it, and it doesn't appear that this author has taken any, any kind of position. Right? She's not trying to convince uh, the reader of one thing or another. She is simply giving facts about the Vishla. Finally, a reliable source has up-to-date information. This characteristic can get a little tricky, but the question more or less we're trying to answer is how likely is it that new information has been discovered since the source was published? Sometimes students ask me, can you just give us a year? You know, what year is the latest year that we can go back to? And my response is always that it depends on what topic you're researching. For example, if you're researching about dogs like the Vishla, I would guess that there hasn't really been a lot of groundbreaking new information that has been developed or discovered in the past 20 or maybe even 30 years. So having this published in October 2000, that's fine, right? Um, this is not old enough to the point that new information has been discovered. However, if you are researching some scientific topic, like maybe supercomputers or space travel, uh, or even something related to technology, then you probably can't go back to October 2000, like this article does. You probably need to find something that's been published within the past one, two, or maybe three years. Because those topics are always evolving, there's always new information coming out, there are always new developments, so you need to use more recent articles. So the up-to-date characteristic really applies differently depending on what your specific topic is. Now, before we finish up today, a note about primary sources. First of all, let's define a primary source. It is immediate, first-hand account of a topic from a person who has had a direct connection with it. So this could be uh, an interview with someone. It could be a journal or a diary entry. It could be a newspaper article, an old one from the time that you are studying. Now, primary sources have pros and cons and we can't necessarily apply the five characteristics of a reliable source to primary sources. Because, and this is a con of primary sources, they're not always reliable. Now, think about what you write in your journal or diary if you have one. Do you always write the truth? 
is everything you write 100% accurate or is it slanted based on your perspective? That's the issue with a lot of primary sources. It can be bias uh, a little bit to the person who is writing it and very unique to their perspective. But at the same time, a pro or a good thing about primary sources is that they can provide you with a unique perspective. So you have to be a little careful with primary sources, but they can be very, very, very valuable in your research and in your writing. So what actions can you take now? You should be able to review the characteristics of a reliable source. Your teacher may even quiz you on those characteristics. You should also review the pros and cons of using a primary source and be familiar with what a primary source is. As always, consult your assignment schedule or check with your teacher to determine exactly what is expected of you next. As we continue down the path to writing a great research paper, we'll talk about how to organize source information and then how to find a book.